All right, let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, and small woodland creatures, uh, I'm gonna put some gloves on here. This is an engine on the bench here. This is from a motorcycle and it's upside down. The motorcycle was a 1984 Honda. This is a 700 cc motorcycle engine. I'm gonna look it up. It's from a 1984 Honda Nighthawk something. I'll look it up. So on the menu today, engine disembowelment. That is total disassembly. With a couple of disassembly notes and a little bit of what's going on here. So the engine is upside down. You can see that, whoa, sorry about that. You can see that I'm not used to doing this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to read any of the comments because my hands will be busy with the engine. So it's upside down. It was, uh, looks like it's air-cooled. On uh, this side in no particular order, it's partially disassembled, so it also means it was partially assembled only previously. So all the bolts, most of the bolts are loose, have been loosened and are easy to just spin it apart. So uh, this oil connection line, the oil was circulating inside a motorcycle frame. How did that work out for Honda? The engine is here dead now. If the motorcycle frame gets bent, nicked, whatever, develops a leak, whatever, the engine oil, whatever, cooling the engine is, that capacity is gone. And this is the oil fill valve, or cap, sorry, not a valve, it's a cap. So that's where you, this is the dipstick. Hope nothing is gonna gush or pour out here. Yeah, okay, I'm lucky today. There, so this is where you would pour the oil in when this is right side around. Some kind of electrical, uh, oh yeah, looks like a gear shift position. Uh, something was happening here because this is the shifter here that you would operate with your foot, with your foot being there's more leverage there and your foot is going this way on it as the engine is upside down. So everything here goes into the bucket. Bolts, so I'm just gonna pull the bolts off this thing. Steel goes into the steel bucket. Aluminum will go into the aluminum. Copper to the copper. What else is on this side? Here we have a chunk of steel uh, working as crankshaft position sensor. The electrical components, whatever was here, is gone, but there's a notch here in the engine casing here for some stuff was spinning here. And uh, when this chunk of metal was close to a magnet, it's a mag the sensor was just a magnet, then uh, it would generate a current crankshaft position sensor on this side there. Let's see if I can. I'll use a screwdriver. Hey, not this one. But everything is looks like metric. Eight mils, ten mils, twelve mils. Typically, the whole thing can be put together or taken apart some such thing. So let's see what happens when I take out this. No, I'm not gonna send you parts from this or whatever. So that's not gonna happen. This is going to just steel recycling. The, okay, this is death of an engine. Uh, the engine is already dead. I'm not killing it by taking it apart. This is its burial. Think of it like that. And, uh, and uh, what killed it? 
a wear and tear killed it. It was built and designed in the 80s and hmm, have a magnet here for, okay, checking for steel. So everything just flies into the bucket just like so. So what killed it? Yeah, time killed it, whatever. The, okay. Some of them will be not too easy to take apart, but whatever. Uh, so wear and tear killed it. And, and the fact that the design at the time, uh, components like the uh, uh, piston, we are going to get to the piston sometime in this video, hopefully, really hopefully. So uh, today pistons are coated with uh, materials that make the piston last longer. And uh, back in uh, 1984, whatever, that, but it wasn't uh, like titanium nitride coating wasn't a factor or a thought or a nothing. It was just. It was just uh, aluminum, and uh, as such, it's um, not nearly okay. Aluminum is hardenable, yeah, by precipitation hardening. But just go with my story. It's not gonna make much of a difference on aluminum. Yes, it will, but whatever. Oh, this is the oil drain bolt here on this side. Here, have a look. See. So this is the bottom of the engine uh, case. And this is the oil drain plug. Here is a washer on it. Usually this gets deformed to the shape of the hole as this plug gets tightened. It's a good idea to replace this washer every so often. And it's a good idea not to tighten this oil drain bolt so much so that it strips the threads out of aluminum. So aluminum is hardenable, but steel will win every single time especially this is medium carbon steel which is way harder than any aluminum so if you over tighten this oil drain bolt and you strip the threads out you are sol what else is on this side that i wanted to show you is and otherwise, yeah, if you have comments, questions, suggestions, ideas, sure, type it up, but uh, I'm not gonna read it because my eyes are here 95% of the time. So what I have here from the handlebar, yeah, from the left-hand side, this is your clutch. And this is a hydraulic clutch where some uh, hydraulic fluid is running inside this steel tubing. And then the clutch lever is squeezing a tiny amount of liquid down this line here to the end of this and small push rod here. That small push rod is pushing another push rod. Okay, the push rod is there. That's the push rod. Okay, so this is being pressed in into the engine. And when it's done so, then, um, then the clutch plates on the other side, I'll show you, disengage or engage, whichever be the case. Let's see if I can pull it out. Oh yeah, there, so it's a long push rod. We'll check it out on the other side. Let's see, what can I easily take apart here? That's a, okay, this looks like an oil pressure sensor that is just, yeah, it needs a crescent wrench or some other kind of wrench that I don't have handy, but it's okay. I just keep taking out these bolts. Okay, some of them are difficult, so I'm gonna need a wrench for it. set of range is oh, here so yeah how about 10 mils let's see 10 mils 
eat? No. What do you mean no? What do you mean not 10 meals? Oh, because that's 11. Sorry, I'm cross-eyed. One, there we go. 10 meals. Uh, so, the bowl simply fly into that bucket for steel recycling. And, uh, okay, back to aluminum. So, yes, aluminum can be precipitation hardened, but don't worry about it too much. So, what killed this engine is that, hey, if on this, this the top of the piston gets dished out, it's too bad. Uh, there's really nothing you can do about it. What if the cylinder walls inside the cylinder get barreled out or dished out? That's too bad. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. It's tragic and it wore away and that's it. So, yes, there might be a pressed in cast iron sleeve pressed into that engine. The, the cylinder wall might be whatever cast iron, but cast iron is harder than aluminum, but nowhere near as hard as, I don't know, titanium nitride, whatever. Some of these modern coating materials. So, the modern materials and modern engines are just better. Are you ready? Let's see what's inside. Ooh, stuff. Okay, there's more steel I can remove here. Needs a, needs a handle. No, not the composer. Put this socket handle here. I really have no idea what lives underneath. So let's have a look see. Aha, nothing. Okay, what it is, is there is something of course. So oil, so this was the oil drain bolt and oil drain hole. So the, um, the engine oil, this is a return line here that was squirting oil in here and this is just a little bit of a labyrinth here for the return oil to i don't know do all its splashing and foaming and frothing in here and kind of whatever you get the idea and just the, any sediment can uh, can be well this is not gold mining but you can think of it as a sluice box you know any sediment will settle in these grooves and whatever so this is obviously non-magnetic aluminum casting soft so there next up here what have we here we have i'll get going with this uh tripod in a sec just needs a hmm i don't know what it needs yeah let's see is it staying now oh there we go okay sorry about that so what we have here i don't know some kind of okay so this is where the used engine oil gets uh, squirted in splashed in the sediment settles in here and above it this thing is hovering this is sucking in the not frothy or foamy engine oil and therefore it has a sieve on it let's see if it's stainless nah maybe some low grade stainless like 304 stainless like the exhaust material so at this point i just put it in the bucket so uh it engine oil gets sucked into yonder oil pump which is sitting here here is a shift shaft or 
some such thing. And then from this oil pump, engine oil goes everywhere. We have here a seal, paper seal. It's not the fluffy one from the Arctic, obviously. All right, I'll try to uh, cringe you a little less. And these ones are just friction fit. So let's see what kind of miracles lie hidden here. Some kind of, a little bit magnetic, but so stainless steel and it just Yeah, I know my glove is ripped, but I'm still gonna be, like my fingertips, whatever, gonna be way better off this way. So yes, like I said, so it's been taken apart. That's why I just took apart one part and underneath there are loose bolts and some. And that's what I expect to happen. So on this side, yeah, we, I have mentioned this clutch thing. And oh yeah, this is an alternator. We'll get there and get some good copper on it. Let's see if this, oh yeah, nice. So what's an alternator? Uh, it's making electricity for a whole motorcycle. So basically the crankshaft is spinning this uh, alternator shaft and on it, hmm, okay. I don't know, we'll call that aluminum. Close enough for now. And on this shaft, some, yeah, there's some wire coils and there are some magnets somewhere. Magnets and wire coils will make electricity. Wire coils are stationary, called stator. The magnets will be spinning, called rotor. Oh, uh, we'll get to it. Okay, maybe it needs a little more prying. Oh, yeah. well, there we go. Let's, yeah. Sorry about the noise. So this is a wire coil. Oh yeah, definitely alternator stator. So that's a stationary wire coil. And uh, is this rotating? It ain't just yet, but you get the idea. So it's copper recycling. That's gonna be the proper recycling. What have we here? It's a little, a little bracket with a grommet in it. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So this bracket was holding this clutch, hydraulic clutch, push rod, actuator, valve thingy. Let's take out this rubber if we can. Nah, maybe later. Uh, let's see what else is underneath a plastic component. Looks like, okay, I see it's probably separating the hot engine from the perfectly not hot, whatever this is, uh, hydraulic clutch actuator. Okay, so that's taken out. How about this one here? Needs a 12 mil. Switching to 12 mil. This here is the final drive. So the motorcycle was shaft, uh, shaft driven. And right now the motorcycle is in neutral and that can be changed by kicking it into gear. And then it's gonna be in first gear or whatever. And over here we have the clutch. Okay, so what's happening on, so on this side is if I come back to this side and this side and push on this rod, if I pull on this rod, nothing happens, but if I push on this rod, then this bearing 
Here gets pushed out. Oops. There. So that would be the clutch rod and this clutch with that bearing was lifting a basket here that's missing because, uh, yeah, because it's missing. And maybe a little more desk space here. And of course this clutch, multi-clutch plate here so that everything has been loosened previously for, I don't know, no particular reason. Mm. Okay. Let's see, the clutch basket is looking like this and it's got some fine bearing. Yeah, this is a large bearing that's in it. Nice component. The clutch plates, okay, looking like so. Friction plate and this metal plate and they are alternating. Friction plate, metal plate, friction plate, metal plate. Let's see if I can get to it. So in a clutch, I have videos about this. In a clutch, come on now. So in a clutch, these are spinning and they have, I'm just gonna separate them like so, they have a, let's call it a millimeter of gap, a sixteenth of an inch of gap between all of these plates. That's a vast exaggeration because it's not a millimeter, it's a fraction of a millimeter. So these can spin either independently or the clutch springs can force everything together and then they, sp then they spin together. So. That's kind of how the clutch kind of works. So these are either spinning independently of each other or they are spinning together. Forced to spin together. Ooh, this is kind of half of it is aluminum, half of it is uh, steel. Let's see. Let's see, this clutch basket wants to come out. Okay, it doesn't just want to come out as is because I'm hitting something here on this side. So we'll just leave it alone for now. On this side, we have a little cover plate, that, aluminum cover plate that was missing there. And that's, oops, something flew away. And what is this? Made of metal is all I know. Okay. So what's on this side of the engine in front of the clutch? Uh, don't know. I would need to look at the manual, but uh, other than a rubber seal, I don't see anything else. The engine halves are splitting apart easily so it's good for me so let's come back to this side we have some wrenching to do here oh there we go all right let's take the final drive These, grom these grommets here, as you see, are holding body panels, typically. Plastic, whatever. I don't know, because your foot is here and uh, there might have been a heel protecting, whatever, something here. All right. Is this coming out easily? Let's see. Let's try one of these wrenches. And it's the wrong size. What are the chances of me being wrong more than twice in a week? And it's only Monday. 
So let's be cranking it. Because aluminum is soft and steel isn't. This one to come out. Maybe, maybe this one is holding it. So what's this little thing here? This is an oil feed line. It's got some tiny hole in it where the oil can come out at the end of the bolt. And so oil is being fed, obviously, somewhere here to the. There's huh, another washer. Okay, somewhere here to the final drive to keep the spinning gears and uh, gearbox and everywhere lubricated properly okay it's not coming out just yet maybe because it's not tuesday okay so here is the oil line with another washer and another oil feeding bolt looking like this so, let's see, is it coming out? I don't know, how about prying, you know? No, it's holding something somewhere together, somehow. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, uh, there are better tools than a pry bar for that. Let's try a screwdriver and see what happened see what happens with just a single dosage of screwdriver application not looking too happy not working not looking too happy the other one oh yeah that's flying out Some disgusting rusty thing. So, what do we do here with this? All right, let's keep taking out the bolts that we can. That usually helps. Ah, another special bolt with oil drain holes or whatever, circulation holes. These longer ones are structural bolts keeping, I don't know, the crankshaft in place, whatever. Here is one of these copper looking washers. Is it even? Yeah, it's yeah, definitely not steel. Copper. Why copper? Because it thermal expansion? I don't know. Mm, right. So here's one of these high pressure oil hoses. That's how it's looking, so this is the shape that was kind of leading here to the, remember this was the oil pan and you kind of get the idea how one of these used to be there and the oil was going around happily and now it's in the bin. So let's see, what else can I subtract here? A toughy one there. So, what I might.
might be doing is a spin around. Okay. Yeah, the engine is, I don't know, 200 pounds plus whatever. It's a heavy one. Okay, we have here an oil filter which was cut away for some other video that I shot in antiquity. And it's still easy to We've got here a few bolts that I can take out. Oh yeah. Ta-da. So we've got the oil pump. And then we have this shaft here that with the, uh, the shift shaft. This is what's on the other side. The shifter forks are on the other side of the shift shaft. And oh, this is the one bolt that was holding up all the previous glorious progress. <sighs> it's heavy. We've got some shift dogs here. Oh, sorry, some uh, alignment dogs here. Or alignment dowels, whatever. Okay, there is another one of those copper washers or whatever. And then, maybe now, this component has, yeah, okay, yet again, one more bolt that I have not seen. All right, that needs a subtraction, and it's eight millimeters. All right, we're going in, eight millimeters. I don't know. I really don't know why I'm dropping so many things today. So let's see this component here now, finally. Oh, yes. Okay, so shifting, like so, with your foot or boot or whatever. And so that's this part. I'll take it apart maybe whatever later. And in terms of filling in with oil, so that was the oil dipstick here. And it's just coming in here, and the oil dipstick is just, you can see it's black, it's just there. There, dipstick, oil, that's it. And so what's this little thing? With the evil screw and an electrical, uh, oh yeah, like oil pressure would be making sense here. And uh, yeah, that screw head is uh, tragic. It needs uh, some, needs to be on the bench, uh, applying pressure vertically down, because otherwise it's not really gonna come out. What have we here for show and tell? Have a look, see. Uh, okay. So you're shifting this with your foot there in different directions, down and up. And then, and then the shift shaft is doing what? Uh, not, a, not a whole lot in response, so, so I'm gonna do it differently. 
I'm gonna be doing a video on just how the how the gears work, not so much on how the clutch works. And put this one aside here. As is the bolt. So so now the Oh, somebody said long time subscriber here since 2017 or someone hello thank you for coming randomly because this is my first random Ooh, that's a needle bearing this is my first video all right so the clutch and the one needle from this needle bearing is missing from there so obviously if you're building a clutch together you would want to not lose those components and in terms of metal recycling here do i want to separate the aluminum clutch basket from the heavy uh gear here with these rivets and grinding and whatever with a mini grinder or maybe just for the fun factor I'm a fun-loving sporting young fella, so I might do that. Okay, what we've got here is magic. This is the gearbox. And how this shift con constant mesh, so all the gears uh, in this whole gearbox, they are all meshing together all the time, but so all of them are spinning, but right now I'm in neutral, so you can see that some are spinning faster than others because the input shaft, <clears throat> the, uh, 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 yeah, the input shaft, that's right, the input shaft and the output shaft, they are connected but not connected in terms of transmitting power because the, these shift dogs here are missing each other, these little rectangular things. So to change gear, that would be a completely different story. So what changes gear here? Uh, the shifter forks are over here. So these shifter dogs can shift sideways. There we go. Sideways, yay much. Precisely yay much is the scientific term here that we need. And that yay much, so it's either here or here there you got it it went in gear there so either connected whoa a lot of torque on this one maybe something easier gear that's uh, also heavy gear okay let's put it back to neutral ish you get the idea so that's how the shifting is working together yeah with the shifter forks engaging here so that's one of them and the other two are running here and here and it doesn't matter which one is first gear or sixth gear or whatever but that's just general overview hey i got three thumbs up thank you very much and what else do we have here what we're looking at here is the end of the crankshaft. This crankshaft is called crankshaft because it's cranky 24 seven. Every day it's cranky. Now I'll show you its shape. It's not a straight shaft. It looks like it's straight from here to here. And it kinda is, but it's got its zigs and zigs and zigs and zigs. So it's cranky. We have here a timing chain here. And another cute little similar looking chain there. And I need to undo these bolts here. This one, those two, and then uh, those two, and those two. So this is four piston one and two, and three and four. These four pistons are connected upside down to this. So you're looking at the bottom of the connecting rod here. And that needs some wrenching. So I'm gonna do that with my 12 mil. Which one is it? 12 mil. Okay. Oh yeah, the inside of the clutch, whatever, the needle bearing. Let's 
see. Okay. This was not tightened. The first one. So that's good. Like I said, this was a demo engine or whatever. It was never put together properly and it died before. I didn't kill it. It just wore away. Just life. And I'll show you some of this wear here. Okay. So this is the end of, end of the crankshaft here. It's spinning on this surface here. Okay, don't fall off the chair if you're looking at it. So on this surface there, obviously, and on a matching this surface here in the other half. You can kind of see that it's got holes in it for circulating oil, and it's got, it. The aluminum here is lined with steel, but even so, you can see that it's got some shiny scratch marks in it. This one had it. This is, you can see that shiny, dull, shiny. This one is, it wore away. Okay. Same on this side. So these, uh, this is a journal bearing. Same on this one like looking like a tiger stripes or whatever. So dull, shiny, dull, shiny. And even within the shiny, there's a central area that's more shiny, whatever. It's, it wore away these surfaces. Just the engine had on its, uh, what about the motorcycle on its odometer? I don't know, 80,000 kilometers or something like that. Not a whole lot, but in 1984 technology or wherever this motorcycle has been, it is what it is. I don't know how it was used. Previous owner took it apart uh, several times. The, what else do I see on this one? Like on the, uh, this is back to the clutch here, the clutch lever. So I I can see, not just, this is just for show and uh, So everywhere electrical parts at the control surfaces around the handlebar uh, was an old, cover, plastic cover for the fuses on the motorcycle. Uh, the plastic is cracking. It was duct tape, the headlight, the turn signals, whatever. The things that vibrate, turn signals, whatever, due to uh, just vibration from road and engine, whatever. And they lose their elasticity and it underwent several electrical glitches, troubleshootings and some kind of Mickey Mouse repairs. And uh, so electrically it's, it was old at the time. This was abandoned by its owner, which was around 98. So it went from 84 to 98, 15 years. And from then on it was in pieces and then the guy tried to put it together, maybe whatever, and I can, uh, I can see evidence of this work everywhere, but it was ultimately probably a uh, shortage of parts. That's what it comes down to. Another one of these alignment dowels. If this was a real, real engine, it's a real engine, but so if this was an important engine, these Alignment dogs are critically important to line up the two uh, crank case halves. So let's see if friction and whatever and good wind on a Wednesday afternoon, even though it's Monday evening, allows me to split open, maybe, maybe not, some of these. Okay, so. Some of them are easier than others, so this is the surface. Off of this is the bottom end of our, our connecting rod. And again, it's one kind of steel and another kind of steel that's lining it, and there's a hole in there for oil circulation. And uh, you can see the gouge marks or wear marks, so dull, shiny, whatever, so stripey. <laughs> Eventually, with some tapping or whatever, gorilla grip, these are gonna come out. Now, normally, so in an engine where this matters, these would be numbered so that, because, because the, 
what is it, connecting rods and pistons or kind of custom fitted to their spots and slots and these would be really important. When you put together an engine that matters much to you, uh, the matching halves be, these are <coughs> important. <sighs> that these components be staying together as a pair. Just vibration, and just see what happens. Uh, if I can split it from the other side. There, ish. Okay. Let's see, yeah, the wear pattern is the same. Yeah, there should not be lines like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, normal wear and tear and... Okay, let's read some of the messages randomly. Something, fasting and whatever. Uh, balance shaft. Curious about balancing. A couple of balance shafts are things. Yes, a couple of balance shafts are a thing. This engine has none visible. Okay, it has something. I'll show you. I keep digging. Okay, so this is... What is it? Uh, crankshaft. This is the tranny transmission, input shaft, output shaft, and underneath there, there are more little things. None of them are really balancing shafts because they are short and lightweight. So the rotating mass of this 25 pound, I don't know if I lift this thing, it's gonna be maybe more than there. 25 pounds. Maybe it's gonna be, I don't know. Just came from the gym, so I'm gonna estimate it. All right. So, okay. So we have here a crankshaft. It's cranky because it's not Tuesday. And, okay. So the direction of the shaft is offset. So offset by one crank and then offset in the opposite direction and offset yet again and it's a rotating surface and offset yet again and offset again so and that's why this is a crank shaft because it's got several like a bicycle crank is offset with the pedal on it there so that's how this kind of rotates when when in place what makes it rotate is the combustion, the pistons that are being driven up and down in the, yeah, the pistons down there, up and down the engine, up and down the engine that would rotate this whole 25 pound crank shaft there. So let me put you down here. So balancer, yeah. This one doesn't really need a balancer. It didn't really need one in 1984 either because it has four cylinders that are offset 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. We're, in, we're back to the original, so it doesn't quite need a balancer as such. Let's see. Maybe I'll take out a few more screws out of this one with the 10 mil which is here. And this one might be holding the chain and all progress. This is a chain tensioner thingy that I'm digging out. I'll show you in a sec what this chain tensioner does. Obviously, the chain is just slack as a wizard's sleeve, so it's not tensioning anything, but the mechanism is here or uh, tensioning the chain. Okay, I dropped a small screw somewhere where it shouldn't be. Let's see if this thing comes out. No, it just doesn't just want to slide out just yet. Let's see if I can do a... Uh... No. It's, uh, I don't know. I would, I need to take out the transmission. I need to take out this chain tensioner thing, which is tensioning 
this short chain here that you can see it's tensioning it really efficiently and either that or I cut it in half with a grinder and then I can lift out this thing and I might do that but um, hmm. let's see what time is it it's kind of it's kind of all the time I had to do so I'm gonna shoot a short video about this neutral i'm gonna put it back into neutral and shoot a, just a short standalone video of this uh, transmission here and we'll continue this tomorrow those of you who have tuned in thank you very much for watching let me see check out the corvette and uh, dirt bikes and uh, something something okay we'll do and uh, what would happen without the uh without them without the balancers without everything uh yeah so it doesn't really need a balancer uh the balancer just reduces vibration to the whole engine so it doesn't self disassemble or whatever or makes life for the rider less uh, miserable just finding other bolts that i can shed here all right so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna work on this video with this uh, transmission here and um, we'll continue this misery tomorrow. Let's see the last comments here. High, uh, twin high power spark plugs, modern engine, less friction, yep. There's even uh, laser ignition, yep, that's right. And uh, yeah, this one just has those uh, old 1980s, really old 1980s, plain and simple spark plugs. No iridium, no exotic metals, whatever, just those, I don't know, dumbass spark plugs, you know, just those plain and simple spark plugs, so. All right, that's it for today. I'm gonna get going with that other video here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.